uh, I was a sophomore, would always practice together. They would, they pushed us to make us better, uh, which made them better. Um, they were very hardworking, very um, encouraging to the lower level kids because they knew we were the future of Cedar Springs. I went to all their games. Um, back then we took the bus, they rode the bus with us. We stayed, we watched, we cheered. Um, and they were a very good basketball team. Very good basketball team. It was hard because they were good. Um, we had athletes you know, as, as, at my grade level, but we weren't even compared to what, what those guys did. And um, they, made, they made us want to be there, but we just didn't get there. Um, basically, it was, it was work ethic, work ethic. Um, be strong, um, have a lot of pride in yourself and your teammates, and work together, That's what they taught us. I think very important because we've only had three basketball teams, to my knowledge, that's made the quarterfinals, and they were um, they were like the second one to make them make it to the quarterfinals. So I think they set the uh, precedent how basketball should be played here. I'm Bill Van Ham. Uh, I was the 185 pound wrestler for Cedar Springs uh, at 1995. Uh, hi, I'm, I'm Brandon Wood. Uh, in 1995, uh, I was the um, 119 pounder for the wrestling team. The team achieved in, in 95 um, almost a perfect record. We lost two matches, um, but we, I think it was two. We, uh, and then we went undefeated, taking on uh, all the, the top ranked teams in the state, and we uh, ended up winning the state championship. We beat, I think, every other team that was at the state champions, or at the state meet, uh, in all the classes. There was tons of memorable moments. Um, some of them probably not uh, not shareable with some of the things we had some really interesting uh, dynamics and characters on the on the team. Uh, memorable moments is uh, for me was the uh, the last uh, the last match I had in my my high school career in uh, the team state where. Um, I was wrestling a number one ranked kid and uh, basically wasn't supposed to win and I kind of tore him apart. It was kind of fun. <laughs> Being able to be with all of all of your team that you've wrestled with for four years and and been friends with in school and, and walking around the arena is just kind of breathtaking. Uh, it impacted me the most in the wrestling team was uh, my best my best friend, Adam Elderkin. Uh, he's two-time champion, uh, one-time third, and uh, I don't know, I remember what he took, fifth or something, the first in freshman. But uh, we've been best friends since we were in Little League, and uh, yeah, he, uh, he got me wrestling, and I, uh, I, owe, I owe my whole career to him. The bonds. This team. This team is a band of brothers. So just like yeah, the the uh, the movies are. Um, we are we are still best friends today. Uh, all of us get together. We try to get together when we can with each other in separate areas. Like um, two guys will get together and go to their houses or whatever. Um, a couple wrestlers still live here in town. We see each other all the time. But any one of them that comes up to any one of us, we just talk like it's family, parents that were on the team. I still run into parents from other wrestlers and it's just, it, uh, it was a really family atmosphere. Passing a coach was hard. Uh, I got a lot of lessons in life from him. He would uh, he would coach me and Mr. Van Ham uh, about I don't know, what he thinks it would take for us to be coaches, and we we took some of his in input, and we uh, we also disagreed with some of his input because he's a hard man. But uh, yeah, he is uh, he is the whole reason I'm coaching today. I mean, anytime I had questions or even just looking up. If I would have a question, I knew, you know, wrestling or really anything in particular, I knew I could call him up and just say, hey, what do you think about this? And he would be, you know, there to answer. And he's, it's not now. <laughs> That's it's pretty tough. 
It was the greatest uh, experience of my life. Uh, I have lifelong friends today because of that, and uh, it's something I'll never forget. It lives, in, it lives inside of me every day, and it drives me to be a, a better person and athlete all the time. If you were wearing a Cedar Springs uniform, you wanted them to win, whether it was their first time on the mat or they was someone that wrestled with you for 10 years. biggest takeaways I have from running track and field at Cedar Springs High School is to just enjoy the process. Enjoy the time with your friends, your teammates, your coaches, because before you know it, you're going to be graduating and for the majority of you, track and field will be a thing of your past. Some of my greatest memories and friendships come from my time in the sport. So even if you're not looking to pursue it outside of high school, those four years that you are going to be competing, enjoy it. And you'll walk away with some amazing memories, amazing friendships, and some very good life skills that you can take with you moving forward. In the 10 plus years in my track and field career, I've had a lot of accomplishments. Some of my favorites are breaking the high school 110 hurdle record my freshman year, winning the 110 meter hurdle state championship my senior year, then progressing into college track and field, winning two national championships for the heptathlon and decathlon in 2015, and also competing in the USA World Championship Trials in 2015. Now, some words of encouragement to any of you that are looking to gain success in track and field. And not just track and field, really anything that you're passionate about in life. And that is, be ready to put in the time and the work. Unfortunately, there is not some magic potion that's going to just give you success with anything in life. If you truly are passionate about something, put your head down, put in that time, and I think you'll be very happy with your progress and how things turn out. Overall, being inducted into the Cedar Springs Hall of Fame is a huge honor. And I've always taken pride in where I come from in my hometown because it's the foundation of who I was as an athlete, who I was as an individual, and it kind of paved the way for me to start building my own path. Just hope that this honor helps bring some inspiration to the younger generations at Cedar Springs High School. I'm Coach Myers. I was the boys high school track coach from 2000 until 2015. And during that time, I met Justin as a seventh grader. Uh, on the middle school track team. I recall Justin being a great teammate. We, we knew coming out of middle school that he could long jump um, and he could hurdle. And, uh, but Justin wanted to try, always try different events. And so we would put him in those events and by gosh, he was successful in those events as well. Probably the record that impresses me the most is, you know, he was a great hurdler. He has both hurdle records. He was a state champ, uh, but his senior year, um, we had to make a relay change. We had to move someone out of the 800 relay and the next guy up was Justin. And that was the week leading into the state finals. And we put Justin in there. He had dabbled in the relays a little bit, but uh, lo and behold, the state finals broke the school record that day. So that record, just being a teammate and working a little extra, getting those exchanges off is very timely, very important, and, and it takes extra work. And, he put that time in in just a few days. Um, outside of running, Justin is talented in many things. He's talented in music. Um, I remember him being in the plays and doing the musicals. Um, just outside of school, he's polite. Uh, he's fun to hang out with now that he's an adult. Um, and he's always smiling. He's got something to smile about. Justin is one of the most decorated track and field athletes I ever had. I want to congratulate you and your induction to the Cedar Springs Hall of Fame. Way to go, baby. Jolene and the group of girls uh, that really kind of got our program going was the second year I started coaching in 92. And, uh, 
and all of them where he had to do what we asked him to do, to try to score, to try to win, to try to be successful. And uh, it was just a good time having those kids to take off all of a sudden, wow, you know, we got something, you know. It kind of helped build the program and uh, start from there. So I knew Jolene uh, as a track athlete. Um, she was one year younger than I was, and she was a uh, just a fantastic long jumper and sprinter on our on our track team. And one of the things I learned from uh, the track clinic from uh, Tom Tellis is who was uh, Carl Lewis's coach, a great Olympian. And he said, if you got somebody good, don't do anything to screw them up. And uh, you know, we worked with her. We uh, Steve Phelps was our distance coach, cross coach, and long jump coach. You know, he coached Tim Relish, who was state finalist too. And uh, they worked on doing some different, called the hitch kick. And uh, that was not the traditional, you know, run and jump. And sometimes when you do something different, it might mess them up, but for, for her, it didn't mess her up. And she never really caught on to it great yet, but she did learn a more elevated takeoff, which did help her, particularly her junior, senior year. After her sophomore year, it was kind of surprised that she uh, did so well at the state meet, being not one of the top people coming in, but she ended up taking third with a 17 foot plus young. You know, she was a, uh, you know, still is, um, just a, a great outstanding person. And, um, you know, she, uh, she raised the bar, so to speak, as far as like um, what athletes in our, in our school and even in the local area could accomplish. And uh, as a student athlete, I believe, trying to think back, that she played basketball in the fall then. I'm not sure if she played volleyball, but you know, track, her and her parents, they were all in. Her dad was uh, prominent in the school board. And, uh, they, uh, and she was a good enough student, you know, to get to college, obviously, to compete there at that level. She's kind of like, you know, one of those role models for by just doing, you know, she, that's, she did the right things. One thing I, I appreciated about her very much is that, uh, you know, she wasn't looking at maybe even what the school record was for any of these things, but she had aspirations of, hey, I'm just going to do this uh, to the very best of my ability. And that just kind of raised the bar for not only, um, you know, what could be expected locally here, but even on a slightly bigger scale. So I think that was just really kind of cool and inspiring in that, you know, she she had aspirations um, bigger than just, you know, one inch longer on the next jump or, or something like that. It was, you know, um, I'm just going to send it with everything I got. And, and that just kind of raised the bar for, for people in the whole area. And, and, you know, I think what's most impressive about, you know, her athletic accomplishments is that, you know, she was a really obviously a quality long jumper, but it, was, it wasn't just for, you know, one or two jumps. She was a, a dominant uh, athlete in the area for, for many years. And I think that that's um, really the reason why we want to try to recognize her. I'd like to say that I'm very proud and humbled to be included in the first class of inductees into the Cedar Springs Athletic Hall of Fame. I'm not the one really being honored. This is really a recognition of the football program that we established here starting in 1973. And when I say we, it was we. It was administrators, it was players, it was parents, it was assistant coaches, it was my fellow teachers, it was all kinds of people in the community. Uh, it's somebody that I reached out to when I was first hired, uh, just to kind of tap into the traditions and the history of the program. But over the course of time, uh, somebody that, that's kind of grown it to be a mentor for me, somebody that I can lean on for uh, for experience. Just a Cedar guy through and through, a great, uh, you know, great ambassador for our school and our community. The memories I have, which are memory <laughs> numerous and too many to mention, uh, some do stick out. Uh, I think of the first red flannel game that we played uh, in 1976. I think of the huge turnout we had in Sheboygan for the 2000 playoff game. I think of the fire department 
and all their support and the convoys that they gave us, the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of parents and supporters that we had over the time. And it, it's really, really something special. Uh, somebody that, that has really built this program up three different times, um, you know, first in the 70s, then in the 80s, and then in the early 2000s. Uh, so it's definitely somebody that uh, you, you want to have uh, associated with your program. I mean, he's an old school guy that, that does things by the book. Uh, somebody that, that in my dealings with him uh, always has a, a great way of, of looking at things and can draw on that wealth of experience and knowledge. Uh, and somebody that, that I look at that I, I think I would have had a lot of fun playing for if he was my coach in high school. The players, uh, so many young, fine young men who worked so hard and tried so hard and gave so much. And that was really what coaching was for me, it was giving back uh, the kinds of things that I got from being a, a player. Uh, the belief, uh, the learning that there's more to you than what you think is in you, and the team unity. And I'm really proud and happy that that's been a hallmark at Cedar. And especially starting this century, I can happily say, having coached in both centuries, uh, but since 2000, the, the program has really excelled and I'm glad to have been a small part of that and I appreciate the recognition and I'm very thankful. So, uh, let go Red Hawks and thank you very much for this honor and I'm glad to be part of Cedar Springs. Thank you. think back to the four years that I was able to coach Heather. The thing that sticks out in my mind is her natural ability as an athlete or competitive cheer. I also remember her having that natural internal motivation. Sometimes athletes on our teams need a little bit more of a push, but Heather was always ready to continue to work hard. She wanted to improve and she had that natural drive to push herself to do that. As a student athlete, Heather was an athlete on our team that I never had to worry about. She was responsible. She was dedicated. And more than that, she was a true leader on the team and in the classrooms. She was that role model that so many students, younger than her and her peers, looked up to. They aspired to be like her. And I truly don't think she realized that. Heather was a huge influence on our team. She was also a huge influence in building the younger programs for Cedar Springs Cheer. She was that role model that so many people looked up to. Her natural leadership ability just naturally carried through during practices and during competitions. She would work hard, she would ask for suggestions, and she would continue to push herself in all areas. I remember her hard work, her determination, her wanting to improve her wanting the team to improve and pushing us all to become a better team. I also remember her silly side. Sometimes during practice, you just need to get a little silly and she could definitely liven up our practice. Those are some of the fun times that as a team we remember. While in high school, Heather was an amazing student athlete. She had the leadership qualities that everyone should aspire to have. She was an amazing role model for her team and for her peers in high school. She was involved in extracurricular activities to showcase those leadership responsibilities that she had. Heather received multiple awards during her four years on the team. She received awards for all conference, all state. She was also on the team for 2010 when we were district and regional champs, and that was our first year going to state finals. In 2011, we also went to state finals. 2012, she helped us reach the district championship her senior year. Heather went on to cheer for Davenport after high school. While she was there, she earned eight national titles between the college national championships and stunt national championships. That's pretty impressive, and I'm super proud of Heather.
for me, he was a great friend, had a lot of good friends in the school system, unselfish, hard worker, respected his opponents, and everyone had to do whatever it takes from practice to whatever, to be your best, push teammates, real team oriented, brought people up when they were down, motivated them to realize that they could be better. A real prime example of the things you need to do and the attitude you need to have to reach the goals that you want to make uh, as an athlete. He was a great example for me. Just was always there like a big brother. There was just four of us in 78 that went to the state finals. It was before they had the team things. So there was just Andre and Bob Shock, Bud Robinson and I, and we ended up with just four of us still being the state runner up through advancement points and win points and pinpoints on how they used to do it. We still managed to be state runner-ups that year. His dad did a lot of things over and above for all the kids to get kids together. Originated the wrestling program for Cedar Springs. Doesn't forget his roots and his friends and teammates from here. Always have some kind of get-togethers when he comes and usually every summer he'll come into town and we have always have a big get together and just reminisce and talk about old times. He didn't start wrestling until he was a freshman. Got him in to get, get away from basketball and have him come up and wrestle and he just took a shine into it and moved on from there and just continued to just to thrive in it. Uh, three years ago, was inducted in the USA Wrestling Hall of Fame. Second best collegiate win percentage in wrestling in college. Dan Gable had a loss his senior year. Andre only had two losses. Through conversations with Andre and the guys that were at the inductee, there was a coach that made a little speech about him and said that he was probably one of the most feared collegiate wrestlers of his time. Pan American gold medals, world championships, national championships, fair amount of those through USA wrestling and AAU wrestling, a vast amount of some of your highest accomplishments in amateur sports. He never did go, he just he qualified. That was the year that they boycotted because of the Russian invasion, but he qualified for the Olympic team that year, never had the opportunity to actually wrestle. One thing that I always remember is when in wrestling with him, I was a 98 pounder, and before every match, he'd shake my hand before I went on the mat and slap me in the face to, just to get me ready. That's one thing he always did with me, just shake my hand, give me a slap on the face, and tell me to go get him. Landon was a, a transfer from Morley Stanwood. Uh, came here in his uh, junior year, starting starting of his junior year, and uh, was actually going to be ineligible because of the moving without his parents. And so he moved in with his grandparents. So uh, tremendous sacrifice on his part from being a, a top athlete, uh, top runner in the state in his sophomore year, but then have to be ineligible for cross country in his junior year. So um, I think what, what that really did was to help me to uh, bring the team up to a higher level uh, when they saw the type of sacrifice that he was willing to do and the type of workouts that he was willing to do uh, that brought the that brought the team up to a much higher level uh, he was willing to always do more uh, as an example um, after a track meet uh, he had run the 3200 and uh, which was the next to the last event and then his cool down was he would go out and run a seven mile cool down and uh, we would be waiting for him on the bus because we we're ready to go and he'd still be out on his cool down. And so what that did was impact the rest of the team to realize that cool downs were pretty important. When they saw the success that he was having, 
um, and why he ran a cool down, then that of course brought the team to a better level uh, in their preparation for the cool down. Certainly I could talk about his times um, in his senior year in cross country. Um, he uh, won everything. He won every dual meet. He won every invitational. He won the conference meet. He won the regionals. He was state champion. Um, probably a major accomplishment was that he was uh, awarded the Mr. Cross Country Award, which is for the best runner in the entire state. Um, he had national recognition. He went on to uh, run in uh, a special race in Wisconsin against 14 other, 15 other states. And uh, that was his first loss of the year, actually. And uh, finished second, and then went out to uh, a national meet in uh, California and finished fifth in the nation and received All-American status uh, as a high school student for, for that lofty uh, goal that I, I guess he had. So uh, recognition, uh, I would say that would be some of his top things. In track, of course, he was also a state champion. Uh, he won the 3200 in uh, track and um, uh, kind of a funny story there. He was, he was not feeling well the day of the meet. He got to the meet and um, uh, it was in jeopardy that he might not even be able to run. He, he, he had such a side ache and the meet got delayed because of rain issues and it got delayed again and again and again and he was supposed to run at about two o'clock and he didn't run till almost eight o'clock, nine o'clock and by that time the gut ache was bad, it was gone and he was able to go on to be state champion. Hi, my name is Kurt Ogula, and I am a former teammate of Ross Powell. We first met in college uh, playing at the University of Michigan together and he was an extremely hard worker. He was a great teammate. He was very positive. Um, his work ethic was um, as good as anyone's and if it was like that in high school, which I assume it was, um, then I know how hard he worked in high school to get where he was. Uh, Ross was, I believe, 5'11". So at the time, everybody said he was too short to play professionally, um, but that didn't stop him. He always worked hard. His family, I knew his family, and they were very hard workers um, having a farm up there. And Ross always gave his best efforts on and off the field. Um, he was a good student who worked hard, and I played with him again professionally. I was a roommate at college with him, then I was a roommate when we were in the minor leagues together and the same work ethic um, carried all the way through his career. Um, one of the um, memories that I have of Ross is Ross struck out Barry Bonds um, on a slider and as Aiden may be able to tell you at some point in the future, I did not do that to Barry Bonds, um, so maybe I should have thrown him a slider as well. But. Um, I just remember Ross um, always hustling. Um, he played like he was 6'10 and nobody could beat him and those are the memories I have of Ross. He was a great basketball player too. We always had pickup games and he was so quick um, and good, good ball handling skills on the basketball court too. So he was just a phenomenal athlete and, and I think again um, when you look at his athletic prowess and his um, work ethic in school academically um, I believe that's why he should be in the Hall of Fame so I'd like to congratulate Ross on being inducted in the Hall of Fame I think it's a well-deserved honor um, we miss Ross very much but I think it's a wonderful honor so um, best um, wishes to all of you for uh, doing this uh, for him Hello, this is Landon Peacock, a past athlete coached by Ted Sabinas. Uh, first of all, I want to give a big congratulations to Mr. Sabinas for the years of hard work that has earned him this award. Uh, 
Uh, I came to Cedar Springs with very big goals and Mr. Sabinas was there to help me every step of the way. I could not have accomplished what I did if it was not for his expertise, expertise with training and his commitment to my success. In fact, commitment is the word that most describes Mr. Sabinas as a coach. My season in cross country continued far beyond the end of a traditional season because I was training for regionals, high school nationals, and USATF nationals. And Mr. Sabinas showed up every day to coach me when I was the only athlete left training. Um, and I think, first of all, his resume speaks for itself. You know, 28 years of coaching the cross country team, um, and even a couple additional years before he was the cross country coach, coaching football and I believe basketball too. Um, I believe 32 years of coaching overall at Cedar Springs and even more um, years than that, um, just as an educator in our district. Um, you know, lifelong coach and teacher um, at Cedar Springs. And um, so I think just the longevity, you know, speaks volumes for, for what he did for our community. In, addition, in addition to his commitment to my training, he also traveled to my races, even if that meant traveling all the way across the country to San Diego. How many high school coaches can say they traveled 2,281 miles to watch one athlete compete? Yes, I Google map Cedar Springs, Michigan to San Diego, California to verify that distance. Running has been an important part of my life and besides the success I've had competing, it also provided me with a free education. And none of that would have been possible without a coach like Mr. Sabinas who is knowledgeable and committed. So thank you so much, Mr. Sabinas, for what you have given me. There is no doubt in my mind that you deserve this Hall of Fame. No, I remember him for his knowledge as, um, you know, in the running world, but also um, just the way that he treated everyone with respect, whether you were a cha state championship level runner and the top runner on the team, um, or you were the slowest kid on the team and you were just there to, to see how much you could improve and, and see what you could accomplish. Um, whether you're at the top or the bottom of that totem pole, you were getting the same level of attention and um, respect and, you know, the same quality of coaching that, that, that the top runner was getting.